here alongside Cavalry FC General Manager Head Coach Tommy Wilden Jr. on the precipice of a CONCACAF Champions Cup debut for your club mm -hmm. against Orlando City. Um, Tommy, I know that this game and this, this moment has been kind of years in the making for you guys, but how does it feel to be here and be about to actually play in this game? Yeah, somewhat surreal now, I think, um, especially because we're in a familiar setting, yet it's not our setting. So uh, I think that's the, the beauty of what this league is, is, you know, I think we had a quote from going through a pandemic to starting a, um, our first ever game with a stadium, but without a roof, uh, adapt and overcome. And I think that's uh, what this club has shown. And we've been able to uh, find ways to still find a way to be successful. And um, earn that right to be in the CONCACAF Champions Cup in this, you know, revitalized uh, version of it. And yeah, it's been a surreal journey so far. Yeah, um, you know, the continental stage is somewhere you guys have wanted to be mm -hmm. for a long time. You felt you should have been in 2019. Uh, spoke a lot last year about how you wanted to be mm -hmm. here. Do you, got, do you, I don't know, talk about it? Do you guys give yourselves a moment to, to think about you know, what this stage means to, to represent your country, you know, on, on a, a club stage. Yeah, it's, and, and uh, it's great just bumping into a lot of familiar faces that, you know, before this league was even brought together, you know, you're, you're having to try and build academies to build pathways where there wasn't any. Um, I think now with having our own domestic league um, that has two clubs that qualify for the Champions Cup, and now you're having a World Cup that will come through in 2026, it's... Uh, it's, a, it's a golden era for the game. Um, what we've got to do as custodians of it right now is capitalise on it. We've got to keep telling the story. We've got to keep you know, giving young players a chance, keep getting Canadian players into here. You know, I was reading an article the other day that Ismail Kone, as a young, what was he, 21 now, yeah. played his 50th game in a calendar year. Mm -hmm. We only play 28 games, so we've got to be in competitions like this. We've got to do well in the Can Champ because for young players to advance, we've got to give them more and more games to be able to get into the national team. Yeah. And these are the games that you want to be in, mm -hmm. you know, where the stakes are high, the stage is, is big, the, bright, the lights are bright. Um, obviously, the timing is maybe not necessarily mm -hmm. ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's not necessarily for them either, but start of your season you know, coming together. But you guys are the first team in CPL history to go to a final and start the next season with the entire starting 11 still in the squad. How important is that to you guys to have you know that structure that was so successful for you still in place from last year? Massively and I think again it shows a certain element of maturity as, as a club. Um, you know I think the people that I've been able to hire around me like Oliver Minatel, like Tofa Fakunli, do a lot of that you know grunt work that I was doing a lot in the off season to try and you know, extend contracts or, you know, you're, you're trying to interfere with things as the, as the season's going on where you actually want to focus on the next game. So they've been great um, in the shadows, working hard, providing players that we want to add to the squad uh, so that, you know, our squad right now had the contracts in place. And, and you look, really, I think you can then start to build on that chemistry that we created mm -hmm. um, and I think the additions that we've added will only make us stronger and I've been able to witness that in training firsthand is it's risen the level of the existing squad that won the league by 13 points so um, yeah it's, it's going to be an exciting season but you know like all other clubs are doing their work behind the scenes it's I think it's going to be a really good challenge this year. Absolutely so let's get into this game itself mm -hmm. um, you know you, you have coached against MLS opposition yeah. before Obviously, you've beaten MLS opposition yeah. with this team. A um, little bit of a different stage, but still, what have you learned about what it takes in, in these fine, fine margin games to, to be successful against a, a team that's maybe you know a level up? Yeah, say. it is. They're more experienced. You know, they spend more money than us. They got you know more higher caliber um, players of different experiences than us. Uh, but the way we see it now, it's a game of football on a different condition. It's eleven against eleven and a referee and two officials on the side and we've got to make sure that we impose our game on them as best we can but also know that sometimes we're going to have to suffer and, and that's what we talked about when we played against the, the Whitecaps or Montreal is we knew that at moments they would have quality so how do you take away their quality and you know a few things we've had to practice in training to do that we wouldn't do against the CPL side um, because it's a 180 minute game as well. Um, so I think it's, it's a great challenge, it's, it's new for us, uh, but these two-legged games, you've got to make sure you've got a result going into the away leg um, where it will be decided. 
this Orlando team, they're a good mm -hmm. team. They, you know, second in MLS last year. Um, they've got some some big names. You mm -hmm. know, player that's won this tournament, Nico yeah. Ladero. For you as a coach and, and as a staff, how much have you if you enjoyed this experience of breaking them down, watching their footage, and, and you know, building a plan to to play this team? Well, do you know what's great is, that, and again, we've got a good analyst team now. That Daniel Hutchins and Justin Anderson Louch, they've picked apart a few things that um, against how to hurt. Uh, Orlando and one of them is like we're watching clips now of when Inter Miami played and Messi's doing it and you're thinking we're in the same tournament as that guy and we're also picking apart a team that's played against him and that's where I talk about that surreal nature of it yeah. is you know but we feel that we've got players that can do the similar things not to obviously the caliber <laughs> Messi can but we've got players that can make those runs we've got players that can make the type of passes that can unlock them so what we've got to do is just try and make sure the first 10 or 15 minutes will always be cagey. We haven't played a ton of games going into it, so the timing is, is key. But after then, we've got to find a way to feel our rhythm and be able to impose ourselves. Yeah, you mentioned kind of that, that game management, mm. those first mm -hmm. 10, 15 minutes. I mean, there's always kind of philosophies and yeah. ways the coaches like to approach the first legs, mm -hmm. right? Home legs especially. Um, the clean sheet is important yeah. at home, yeah. right? The, with away goals. just. What, how do you kind of approach a first leg knowing that you then go down to Florida in mm -hmm. very different conditions to play and, and hoping that you're still alive at that point? Yeah, it is. And uh, I remember that against uh, when we beat the Whitecaps in 2019, when we drew nil-nil, I think everyone was like, oh, that's a great result for you. You know, like they, they didn't beat you. You know, it was, yeah. it was like that because we just launched, but then we went down there and we scored early and we knew goals yeah. count as double. And I think from there, you know, and then Zator's header. So when they did score the goal, we knew that they had to score two in order to beat us. And I think it's massive. You know, th there's two ways to look at it. You can try and go out very defensively. Mm -hmm. We're good in our defensive structure, but that's not our forte to try and suck the life out of the game. Our forte is to try and take our game and impose it on them. I think that's how we'll grow in confidence is if we can show elements of what has, has grown last year and the new cavalry we talked about. And also having the bravery to play, you know, this is a side that's going to press us. They're going to hunt us. They're going to feel that they can uh, impose their defensive pressing on us. And we've got to be brave to play through that because if we do, you're getting the likes of Moosey and Willy Akio faced up against them. And I would put them up there in the bracket that they're players that can play at that level. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I said it was the home leg, but I think there's no secret that you guys would rather mm -hmm. be playing yeah. this game in Calgary. Um, obviously, the, the circumstances conspired against yeah. you, uh, which is unfortunate, but, you know, it's not an unfamiliar mm -hmm. territory, as you alluded to earlier. You've been to this stadium, you've won at this stadium mm -hmm. the last time you were there. Um, are there things about you know, playing on that turf, that smaller pitch that you guys know, the away locker room you know that maybe you can use to your advantage? Yeah, other than it being painted purple, um, yeah. yeah, it is. It's look, they're coming to Canada. They've still had to get on a flight, whether it be chartered or you know their, their domestic airlines. They've still got to come to Canada. They've still got to travel. They've still got to adjust to the wet, the cold, and the wind, like we do. But they're coming here. They're not used to it. They've been in Cancun. They've been playing in, in Orlando. I'm sure they're better versed to be playing in those conditions. And some of their results when they've come to a Seattle or a Real Salt Lake haven't been favourable for them. So. There is a minor advantage and it's up to us to try and take a hold of that because we've got to be able to find a way to make them uncomfortable with the ball and without it. Just lastly, you know, just seeing the players and their, added, their energy the last couple of days mm. leading into this game, the excitement is very obvious. It feels like this is maybe a game where, where you don't really need to do a lot of motivation, mm -hmm. right? They know the stage and, and the, the stakes, right? Yeah, it is. And it's, you know, it's, it's interesting when we've got 21 signed pros, mm -hmm. um, and all 21 of them are fit and available for selection, which in a preseason I don't think I've ever had. And a credit to our medical team because they've managed them through these six weeks. It's been short, but they've also managed in the off season. I think having that month less than what we, we've, we've usually had has certainly helped with the preparation because there's excitement for this game. But what I've told them as well is we've got to have players that can start a game, players that finish it, players that can start the game in the next one, finish the next game. And, and we've got to play the full 180 minutes. And if we give a best account of ourselves, then you know what? We might get that bounce. We might get that bit of chance. And, uh, and, and that's what wins your cup matches. Absolutely. Kickoff, uh, Cavalry FC, Orlando City SC, leg one of the CONCACAF Champions Cup. 7 o'clock Pacific time, 8 o'clock if you're in Calgary, 10 p.m. out in the Eastern time zone. Watch it on One Soccer, or even better, buy yourself a ticket if you haven't yet and join us at Starlight Stadium. Tommy, thank you so much. Thanks very much. Cheers, Charlie.